Today, we're just going to kind of go over the likelihood or even how do the Broncos make the playoffs? How do they get there? It's the million dollar question. The Broncos went into the bye week, made no trades, did nothing, which leads me to believe that the Broncos think they actually have a shot at it. So I thought we'd sit down and discuss how can they? What is the likelihood of this happening? Um, But first, Frankie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited. You know, we're finally here. We get to we get to live in a little bit of optimism here. You know, we're not we're not doing tank talk. We're not doing draft talk. We get to say, how are the Broncos going to do this, baby? How are we going to how are we going to make it to the dance? Because, you know, as crazy as it might sound, as the way things are currently kind of structured, they're not out of it yet. Um, it's not incredibly likely. I don't think that it's a guarantee. I wouldn't put my money on it. I wouldn't even put my friend's money on it. But I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the the landscape of the NFL and I'm looking at the trajectory of the Broncos, which is undeniably up. And I'm like, hold on just a second here. How are you doing, Joey? I'm doing well, man. And I I just want to hop right into what you were just saying. Um, The Broncos are sitting at three and five right now coming off the bye week. Frankie and I were discussing before the show. Kind of nice. Not, you know, family gathering, being able to chill out during the bye. Um, But three and five right now, the Broncos are during this time, playing the Buffalo Bills next week. But, Frankie, how many wins do they actually need to get to where you would say, okay, I feel like they have a really good shot at making the playoffs um, with nine games remaining? So, I mean, I think the goal has got to be nine wins total. So, I think they need to win six of these final games, you know. And when you look at the schedule, I think there are six kind of winnable games here but we'll kind of get to that. But yeah, I think they kind of, if you can get to a minimum nine games, you kind of give yourself a decent shot. It might be a bit of a struggle with teams like the Jets also in contention, but if they can get a win over the Browns, that would be massive for their chances. Uh, You know, yeah. So basically that would be kind of a big thing. If the Jets continue running though, they will be another team that'll be kind of in it until the end. They'll be an interesting one to watch, but really I think at this point, Denver is truly playing for that seven seed. This isn't me trying to like really like neg them, but, the Bills and the Bengals, I think, kind of are going to get those other two seeds. I think those are 10-win football teams, even though I think they do have their own issues. I do think those are 10-win football teams that kind of end up locking up the five and the six seed. But I think Denver can get to that seven seed because the teams they'll be contending with, like the Browns, the Jets, and the Steelers, I think those teams are beatable in some areas. It's true, Frankie, but when you look at the record, and I want people to be aware of this, the Broncos are sitting at three and five, which is tied for second to last in the AFC. Still, the Raiders, Colts, Jets, Chargers, Texans, obviously you said the Bills, Bengals, Browns, and Steelers have a better record than the Broncos right now. Um, they are still tied for second yeah. to last in the conference uh, for the AFC right now. The Broncos are. So it, it is kind of uphill battling. Uh, well, and it, even Broncos are better than a lot of those teams. I do. It's just you dug yourself in a hole and yeah. it's hard to get yourself out of the hole now. Yeah. Well, one thing that I will say, I mean, this kind of just touches back to the thing I just said is like they, they get to play the Texans. They get to play the Chargers twice still. So, I mean, they can still kind of do some damage to those playoff rankings on their own. Obviously, they definitely will need some help. This isn't like an easy road for them. They've set themselves up on not the easiest path, but, you know, the They've got their kind of their fate in their own hands with the fact that, again, I mean, they Browns, Texans, Chargers twice. Those are going to be teams that they get to battle with. And those are teams that could decide the playoff odds. It'll be a real bummer if the Nathaniel Hackett loss ends up kind of keeping them out of this one. Right, exactly. And I highlighted some of those in here, Frankie. Um, Obviously, the Broncos for teams that they are competing for the playoffs, they've already played two of those guys and they lost those games. Um, the, those being the Raiders and the Jets. Now, if the Broncos go out there and just dominate the second half of the season, which they're going to have to do, we've described that yeah. at minimum six and three. That's the way you make the playoffs. Uh, it won't matter. I don't. I don't suspect the Raiders to get to nine wins, and in getting to nine wins, you're going to have to beat a Raiders team. Uh, it, it shouldn't matter, but those are two highlighted ones I had made sure to do because. So far, they haven't played anybody else on this list. Now, going to the path, and I think that's kind of the next segment here, who do the Broncos have to play next? And you were highlighting this uh, in what you were saying, Frankie. The Broncos have to play the Bills. Now, that is 
next week coming off a bye. You have Sean Payton coming off a bye, first time in a Broncos uh, in a Broncos. It's not a uniform in his Broncos uh, visor, I guess. <laughs> coming off a bye, he's been really good in the last thirteen years. Ten and three coming off of buys uh Sean Payton has so this is a big game for the Broncos I, I I almost suspect Frankie this might be in my brain a must win for the Broncos because they're competing for a team that is also competing for a playoff spot like the Broncos with not much of a better record the Broncos can set that uh, another playoff team back while jumping them a little bit in in the odds so how important is this Bills game for the Broncos so it's very important, but I will also say I don't think it's an end of the world loss because again, like they they can endure in my mind three more losses throughout the rest of the season. If the Bills ended up being that team, I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't shock me because we'll, you know, we'll touch on the other teams after this. But you lose to the Bills, you drop to three and six. That's horrible. But your next three games are against the Vikings, Browns, and Texans. Two of those teams are obviously teams they'll be competing with in the wild card. And I think right now all three of those are winnable games. You know, I'm not saying those are the easiest opponents by any means. I think the Browns are by far the hardest and probably in my opinion, I think the Browns are probably the toughest matchup they have left on the schedule just because of what the Browns do on both sides of the ball. But yeah, this, this bills team, it's going to be a very tough matchup. I am excited to see what Sean Payton can do with two weeks of preparation. Same to Vance Joseph. I think we've kind of seen him make a lot of adjustments over the past couple of weeks that have been very beneficial to this defense, but you know, it's a weird thing, this Bills team this season, because on one hand, they they don't look as clean as I think you'd expect. Some of the injuries they've kind of endured to Matt Milano, to some of their members of their secondary, though they have gotten healthier in the last couple of weeks, have kind of slowed them up a little bit. But this is still a very like sound unit, and it has Josh Allen at quarterback, who, even though his interception numbers are high, they're kind of a little skewed, I'd say, because... Like I'd say he's throwing a really ugly pick a game, but then outside of those that like one ugly pick a game, he's playing some lights out football. Like Josh Allen has been pretty damn good this season. They lack a little bit of weapons outside of Stephon Diggs and Dalton Kincaid. The running game has been a lot better this year, though. They're a lot more of a diverse offense. So it'll be an interesting game. I'm excited to see how Denver can look. And this is a good test for them to kind of see where they're really at. I think if anything, this is a really good measuring stick. But yeah, as far as for is this a must win, I'd say if they won this game, it would be absolutely massive. And then I think we would all be pretty much back, but losing this game, I don't think is the end of the world. And if they play a close game to the bills, like, and then go on like a two game win streak and they're five and six against two beatable teams, as I was saying, I don't think my confidence would be that shaken in this team because as like, I think this bills team is still a near super bowl contender. I don't know if I want to say they're a contender yet, just because of some of the shakier losses they've had this season, but you know, they're a good team. And if Denver can prove that they are also a good team and we just saw that the past couple, two weeks with the chiefs and the Packers, I don't think there's a reason not to believe them, you know? So a little bit of a rebuttal, the Broncos could play this game close and you know, the Broncos only get one bye week a year. (laughs) So like, this is their opportunity to come uh, extra week prepared for a bills team that is Hmm. struggling right now. Um, and like I said earlier, you're able to knock somebody down while gaining. And this is one of your toughest, toughest opponents left on the schedule. The, this game to me, just going through the rest of this list here, um, and I'll read it off real quick. So it's Bills next game. Vikings, you have the Browns, you have the Texans, you have the Chargers, the Lions, the Patriots, the Chargers again, and then you finish the season with the Raiders. I think this Bills game is big of a game as any of these. I, I think it's probably the biggest game out of all of these. Um, just out of the fact that, hey, if the, if the Broncos fall to three and six, it's going to be really hard for them. I mean, uphill battle, guys. We're talking about the Broncos need to go six and three. That seems like a tough task. Now the Broncos need to go six and two, a tougher task. You're digging yourself in a deeper hole. Uh, not winning this Bills game right here. I think this is a massive win for all the reasons I stated. Um, but you, you're kind of pushing me back a little bit, Frankie. So I want to ask you, is there any win or any game on this that looks like a must win to you? I mean, there. I, this is going to be cliche, but I think every game is kind of a must win, you know, if you want to like have it on that angle. But I mean, the way the way it's being stated, like, you know, like they can they can endure three losses, right? If those three losses come to the Bills, 
the Lions, who I think are also, you know, a contender-ish contender team. And then the Browns, who I'd say, you know, are questionably a better team there in that playoff tier. That's still nine wins. And those wins would come against the Vikings, who have Josh Dobbs right now. Two wins against the Chargers, who, you know, like they just kind of charge her every year. It kind of seems like Denver's almost guaranteed to get a win against them because they just do every single season. And then the Patriots and the Raiders, who are kind of, not to be rude, but in shambles right now. I know the Raiders just had a big win, but I think that was kind of more of an interim coach bounce win than it was them signs of them being like a true winning football team. So while yes, I'd agree that like they need to win this game. Again, I don't think they're completely out of it just because the rest of the schedule isn't that it isn't going to be as hard as the bills game. So like, you know, if, if the team is still playing confident ball and then goes out and wins against Josh Dobbs, you know, the Deshaun Watson led Browns and the Texans, and they're sitting at six and six. And I believe those are all winnable games. I, so I'm going to give you one last pushback and we'll move on after this. Um, I don't, I don't want to sit here and argue about yeah. this, but if the Broncos can't beat the bills off of a bye, I'm definitely not saying they're winning in Detroit. Right. right. They're, they're and, I'm, and I'm saying they lose that game. Too. Oh, exactly. So that means they can only have suffer one more loss. Yeah. They have to be perfect, damn near. They can't they, – they cannot screw up. And, I, I mean, the one thing I remember when Urban Meyer came to the league um, in the NFL, not a great coach, right? But I remember him sitting there and talking about uh, – they caught him on the mic'd up, and they were like – he was like, damn, it feels like there's just no layups in this league. The yeah. margin for error or the margin between talent, between the good and bad, is so small. Um and just working my way in a position where I'm saying the Broncos can't have a screw up. Like they better beat the teams they should beat. And then also the ones that are tough. Like I'm looking at, you know, the Browns Texans and then in, uh, in uh, Los Angeles for the chargers, you, you can only lose one of those. And then you better not screw up like when you have the Patriots at home, the chargers at home, the Vikings at home. It, it just makes it that much more improbable. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's it's an easy probable task, but I'm saying, like, from a realm of, like, oh, they have to win the game against the teams that we're acknowledging are much better than them, I don't think that's the case. And, I mean, yes, I'm excited to see what the team can do coming out of the bye, but if they lose to the Bills, who are, I think we both agree, a top, what, four or five team in the AFC, that automatically shoves them back down. Like, they're they're not the seventh team now. Like, I don't think that's fair at all, because I think, in theory, like, like they're going to be dogs in this game. If they came out and win, it would be an upset. No, it, it would, but I'm just oh, right. doing the likelihood of them making the playoffs and they're going to have to get upsets. I think in order to make the playoffs, because I don't trust any team in the NFL, not to screw around a little bit. Um, like you said, with Buffalo, a team that I think could ultimately win the Super Bowl. yet they're sitting here right now, not even in the path. I, I know they will make it because they're that good of a team, but Right now, three screw-up games almost, right? And that's yeah. why they're in the position they are. I just have a hard time seeing the Broncos going out there and playing perfect against the teams that they should win. Um, and then also, like, they, they, I think that they're going to have to have an upset in there ultimately to win, get make the playoffs, I guess is my case. Okay. I, I, I just can't see them playing perfect throughout the rest of the record. That's right. Yeah, no, we're just – I. The way I see it, I think, you know, if it did come to it and they played like if they played to the level and this is just my personal belief of where the team's at and they played worse than the teams I think are better than them, but then they played better than the teams I think are worse than them. I think they could still go five and three on the rest of the schedule because that's just the way I see it. I think they're better than the Chargers. I think they're better than the Patriots and better than the Raiders. And yes, I understand there's no layups and yes, they can lose any of those games. I'm just saying the avenue is there that you win. Those are four wins right there. That's already seven. You know, you just need to scrape out a couple more and there's winnable games on the schedule. Sure. Sure. I mean, I, I do agree. There is a chance guys. I, I definitely don't want to um, get rid of Frankie's point there. I, 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 all I'm trying to do is just highlight. I think this is a big game right here. Um, I, I also want to highlight the chargers, right? So we have the chargers left on the schedule and right now they are sitting with a four and four record. If I am not mistaken, yes, four and four. So they're one game up on the Broncos right now. This is another one I want to highlight because you can really make up a ton of ground beating the Chargers and going mm -hmm. undefeated on the season there. Those are huge ones. If you are able to sweep the Chargers, I mean, 
ultimately, probably, um, we're talking probability here. I would say probably they go one win, one loss. I don't know. I, I, when I'm doing WLs at the beginning of the season, I probably would have done that. But this is one, a huge swing factor for the Broncos, I think. You have the at Chargers, and then you have the Chargers at the end of the season um, home. So if the Broncos can go into this Chargers game – in Los Angeles and steal that. That that's that's one I want to highlight before we move on here, Frankie. Do you, do you agree with me? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. That entire month of December, honestly, is so many. It's it's going to be a lot of fun games, I think, too, because all these teams, like I expect them to kind of be in contention until the end. But I mean, one thing I guess I will highlight about Los Angeles that is kind of like maybe something to a little bit hopeful or hope for if you're like a Broncos fan before this game happens is hopefully it just kind of continues to fall apart a little bit for Brandon Staley, you know. Like, yeah. if that locker room kind of continues to have turmoil, as I think we kind of saw happen in Vegas, like, that could be a bit of an easier game on December 31st when maybe a few of those locker room guys are checked out if they're not in playoff contention. Though, like I said, I do kind of expect them to be. But, no, 100%. Going into Los Angeles and playing the Chargers and having to beat that that team who has been passing the ball pretty well. They haven't been great in the red zone, but Justin Herbert has been kind of a little bit unlocked with Kellen Moore, I'd say. Like, their EPA numbers aren't necessarily reflecting it as well, but they're a team that's going to be definitely one to watch out for facing Denver down the stretch. Exactly. Because let's say the Broncos get to that point, Frankie, with only um, one loss or let's say zero losses. And, and I think all of Broncos country would expect the Broncos to lose to the Lions. So that's one I just put an L next to, I think a little bit, but yeah. at least if you go in to the chargers and beat them there, the chips are in your table. Cause you can go and beat, New England. Yeah. And you, it's if one you thing just too. Beat the Chargers away, you should be able to beat them at home. And then you have finish off with the Raiders. Um, and they're kind of a wild card right now under their new coach. I, I don't know what to think of the Raiders. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, the chips are at least in your table if you can go into that, especially if you get a win against the Bills. Um, and, again, you can't screw up against the Vikings or the Browns. Those are yep. two games that I think they should win. And then when you look at – Houston, that's a tough one. We just saw what CJ Stroud did this last week. <laughs> Going berserk. He already looks like, to me, like a top seven quarterback in the mm-hmm. NFL. He looks unbelievable. That's a tough one, but you have it at home. One that you should, or if the Broncos are a playoff team, one that they should win. So that that, that Chargers game is a huge one. Um, but, Frankie, this is kind of where I want to switch into the likelihood of this whole situation before, or I, I guess, do you have any extra notes on these games that you want to get off your chest? I mean, one thing I will say, I didn't, not to like, I, the Browns game, I think is one. I almost like not to be the Browns game scares me a lot. I think the Browns defense, like they are one of the, their defense overall is an elite, elite unit. Miles Garrett is obviously doing ridiculous stuff, but their run defense. And I mean, that's kind of a thing we'll get into when we talk about like what the Broncos need to continue doing in the second half of the year. But, their defense as a whole combined with what they're able to do on the ground. Kevin Stefanski has been putting together really good offensive game plans, no matter who's that quarterback. And Deshaun Watson sadly is back healthy. Um, That game is one that I am kind of looking at like, man, that one I think is honestly like, I don't want to say tougher than the bills, but it's almost, it's almost level with me just because the bills does have that extra benefit of, I do think Denver gets, you know, they obviously get the bye week boost. I think they're coming out of a lot of momentum, Whereas the Browns, like that Browns team is messy and they are just very talented on both sides of the ball and they're deep and they are good at the things that Denver is not good at kind of stopping. So I'm that, that one kind of scares me a little bit as well. So that was, that was my last little thought on those games, but yeah, no, I mean, it'll be a very exciting end of the year. I think at the very least, because I think there is a world where Denver's just kind of in it until the end, which I know is your nightmare with them kind of always being in the graphic, but just on the outside. But I think that's kind of what it's setting up to look like. <sighs> Oh, there you go. Damn. Okay, well, we're working <laughs> in the likelihood then, man. I want to talk about what – so we went over all of this. Can you at least put odds on the Broncos making the playoffs? Can you give me a percentage? What percentage do you, do you want you me to slap Broncos? odds on it? I want you to – I will too. I will too. What What percentage do you think that there is of the Broncos making the playoffs? I'll go like I'll go like 22%. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm right around you. I think yeah. – I, I I'm thinking like – 15 18 yeah. percent somewhere in between that I, I think the odds are really low now there are some things that could swing that right um frankie you brought up before the podcast started and i want to throw it to you for this brother's been relatively healthy this entire year uh they, they of course 
suffered injuries at the beginning. Tim Patrick, K1 Williams are two standout ones that have lasted this entire season but outside of that i mean you check the injury report weekly and it's like damn the broncos haven't had many guys on here they just have guys returning it feels like which Mm -hmm. has been good news uh and that is a massive swing factor do you agree oh continue to stay healthy yeah i mean so not only for the broncos but i mean as we look at the rest of the league man i mean as as anyone who knows who's watched games outside the broncos there's a lot of backup quarterbacks playing right now it feels like there's like 12 it feels like there's a lot of teams with backup offensive lines with backup running backs. Like it's, it's kind of a, it's an epidemic right now. And Denver is kind of being luckily lucky enough to avoid it, which is crazy when you think about the last couple of years, or at least it's kind of starting to level out a little if Denver, which, you know, what we've been talking about you and Zach had a great episode yesterday. You had a, the video posted today. The offensive line has looked really good and has looked continuously better week in week out. That's because they've had the opportunity to gel. They've already gotten a lot of snaps together. If that unit can continue to stay healthy through the rest of the year, by the end of the year, we might be saying, man, this is one of the best offensive lines left just because there aren't that many that are still healthy. You know, if Russell Wilson can keep being, you know, the quarterback he is, which, you know, I think when you look at overall, if injuries weren't a factor, he's probably what, like the 20, 22nd quarterback in the league, you know, not trying to beat on Russ. Well, as a lot of these quarterbacks are starting to drop like flies, we're seeing the Rams have to sign Carson Wentz. We're seeing the Vikings pick up Josh Dobbs. And this isn't me trying to beat up on those guys. Russ starts to kind of slowly climb up those rankings. And if you're saying to yourself, man, we have like the 15th best quarterback with a top offensive line while the rest of the league continues to have maybe random injuries pop up, that that's a really good thing for Denver. And I mean, we're talking about these guys who are learning the super complex offense. We're talking about, how, yes, this is a bit of an older team in some areas, but there are a lot of key guys that we really like, and I think the fan base really likes, that are really young, that are learning this offense. When you talk about Jaleel McLaughlin, Marvin Mims, everyone wondering where's the Marvin Mims usage. That's going to go up in the second half of the season. So, like, things like that, if health can be a big factor for those guys to continue to grow in this offense, that bodes really well for Denver, I think. Because, I mean, again, they're just – they're on both sides of the ball, they're on a very upward trajectory – And these are guys that, like, when we talk about the Baron Brownings, the Jonathan Coopers, the Marvin Mims, even guys like Jerry Judy, I don't think any of us think they've hit their ceiling. So it's like, what's to stop them from continuing to grow in this offense that I think uses, or offense and defense, that at the moment I think is using everybody pretty well? Yeah, I I totally agree with you in the way that injuries play a massive part of an NFL season. I mean, I, I, I bet you I would love to look at the numbers one day and just see the teams in the Super Bowl and how healthy they are compared to the other teams in the NFL yeah. because it plays a massive factor in it. Um, who remembers when the Broncos got blown out by Seattle in the Super Bowl? And do you guys remember how many injuries the Broncos had during that? Von Miller, Chris Harris, they, they, their defense was just out, 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 out. And like Ryan Clady was out for that game, and it, it played a part ultimately in them not winning a Super Bowl or them not even competing in the Super Bowl. Um, I, I would love to look at that one day, and it just ultimately, if you can stay healthy, it gives you a massive leg up on the other teams. This is the most physical sport ever, it feels like, and injuries are expected. So if the Broncos can continue their health luck, um, it would be awesome. I just don't know. And it would play a big factor in, hey, my probability probably goes up another 30%. If the Broncos stay healthy the rest of the season, no no big injuries, uh, that, that, that would go massively up. My only thing here is that uh, I, it's hard for me to bank on any of that, oh, yeah. obviously. And I don't think you are either, Frankie. But when I'm looking at the AFC as a whole and looking at the teams that are competing for the spot, one, I think – Injuries are going to be the biggest factor in what team ultimately gets that last spot or not. <laughs> None of these teams are that great. That, that's my honest opinion. None of them are. It, it's a bad year at the bottom of the AFC. Mm-hmm. I look at the Bengals, Browns, and Steelers. I've all made the playoffs right now. The Bengals look like a good team. But you can't tell me the Browns or Steelers should are regular playoff teams. They're not. They're not very good. They're just not. Um, so one big injury – away all these teams are from plummeting i think they really are the broncos are one offensive line injury away one guy on ir from just plummeting they don't have anybody else to plug in there they're surviving off their health which which it's like when we talk about the health 
compared to the likelihood, it swings both ways, right? They're able to stay healthy. Yes, massively improved. If one big injury happens, it's uh, it goes the other way. It, it could be really scary for the Broncos in that aspect, but along with all these other teams as well. Yeah, no, that's a massive point. That was what I wanted to touch on is Denver also, that's the double-edged sword right now, is Denver does not have the depth where, like, as you were just saying, one one injury along this offensive line, one one chink in the armor in the secondary, you know, maybe we see like as you know, one of these corners go down and then you got to throw Damian or uh, you got to throw Mathis back out there. Like it's a slippery slope. You know, this team I think has a long way to fall if these guys start being able to not play. And the, the other part of that, uh, this is going to kind of lead into my next point with uh, the, with seeing how these rookies and younger guys kind of develop throughout the season, but also do we see them hit a rookie wall? You know, like that's something that's always a big factor in the NFL. You know, once you hit that week 10, week 12, these guys haven't played a season this long. These guys aren't used to still practicing this late into the year. Like it, it's, it's not this type of thing usually in college. So it's interesting to see how guys like Jaleel deal with that rookie wall, how guys like, you know, how Drew Sanders deals with it, how some of these special teamers deal with it, you know, when they might have to see some reduced snaps later in the year, if they start to make some of these more rookie mistakes as they get a little bit tired or, or maybe as they start to endure a little bit of injuries. So that's a big factor as well with the injuries It's kind of, do we start to see some of these rookies hit this rookie wall, especially with the fact that they're in Denver, which is obviously a much more taxing place to play sports. 1000%. And Frankie, I think we did a pretty solid job today of uh, just outlining how the Broncos can make the playoffs, the likelihood of them making the playoffs. And I hope everyone that listened to this has a little bit of a better understanding of how the Broncos can get there and what factors play a part into that. Um, Yeah. But I think that does it all for us guys. Please make sure you're following Frankie Films. Uh, that's at Frankie Films on Twitter. Frankie Abbott, my main man. Uh, make sure you're liking and subscribing. We're dropping Broncos content every day. But until next time, guys, go Broncos.